Welcome to SelfDiscoveryWisdom.com, formerly known as Self Discovery Media. On these podcasts, you're going to hear people who speak from the heart. They've taken the journey in life. Many things have happened to them, but they've changed it to happening for them. And in their strength, their courage, they've discovered their abilities and their wisdom, and they are now sharing it here with you. Do enjoy each show. We bring it to you with love and knowing that it's going to help you on your journey of life. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Welcome back to another edition of Choose Positive Living, right here on selfdiscoverywisdom.com. I'm your host, Sarah Troy, and my wonderful guest today is Marissa McGrady. She is the fairy godmother's growth guide uh, to whims- with whimsical poems and radical pose for self-exploration. She is uh, also a um, the social media goddess, uh, which really kind of shares all those wonderful pieces of information and illumination every day. Uh, a social media sensation, a fairy godmother of self-help guide that isn't just one size fits all. Modern media makes love, self-love seem simple. Buy a bath bomb, apply a face mask, and voila, you have got self-love. Um, come and find and canned in your convenience, but self-love cannot be bought. There is no one size fits all approach to self-care. What happens once our bubble bath drain and drains and feelings of self-loathing and doubt and despair creep back in? How do our bodies resource available, including free time and physical emotion needs impact our ability to care for ourselves? Are our bodies bad? just because certain industries, organizations, or people deem them so. So we are going to be talking today about um, the Fairy Godmother online and, and explores the questions more about her debut of self-help book, The Fairy Godmother's uh, Growth Guide, uh, the bite-sized poems, and in part one, new perspectives about our bodies that inspire us to see ourselves in different lights. Uh, the prose part two explains um accommodating sustainable approaches to self-care while addressing the harms of industrial um, self-love and exploring the internal concepts and external factors impact self-worth. We're going to redefine your relationship with yourself and help you make your life more magical. We all need a whole load of fairy dust. Absolutely. So welcome (laughs) to the show, Marissa. Thank Uh, you so much. Just a, a disclaimer out there, folks, I do have a cold. I don't normally sound this husky, so my apologies, <laughs> but welcome. Thank you so much, Sarah. It's such a delight to be here. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited to share a little bit about the book and about how we can make life more magical and how we can find fairy dust all around us, even if we don't get an actual vial when we need one. <laughs> exactly. Well, we can manifest it because it's all to do with our own energy, our own illumination our own essence and then you know everybody's busy looking out there as you say on social media everybody is out there you know buying the next thing that's going to make them look beautiful make them ageless make them pretty and this is the external life isn't it and if you're living in the external life I guarantee you I promise you did that being there uh, not there anymore you will constantly be chasing an image that takes you away from your true essence of who you really are because Mm -hmm. that self-love is your inner beauty that is revealed through the essence of that love but they they want to um tell you that it's purchasable for 9.99 get it now right so buyer beware isn't it it is and it's definitely worth noting not only buyer beware but i think a lot of folks that as they go on their self-love journey, they become aware of, oh, well, this specific product is not going to help me. I probably shouldn't buy it. It's not just one product that is the issue. It's the fact that so many things around beauty and image and how you are presented to the world, like you said, externally, um, they are all industries. Mm. And so it's not just that one product is going to be problematic and then some other product might be you know the magic answer that you're looking for it's that they are an industry and so over time not just you know a few years but decades even centuries they want to keep you on this hamster wheel generations of people on this Mm -hmm. hamster wheel of believing that they can externalize uh feelings of self-worth feelings of self-love and purchase it to then bring those feelings into their lives instead of looking for those feelings within themselves and then i think also a lot of these industries prey on the fact that many people 
will become aware of that and look within themselves to try and find that self-worth, that self-love. And when they look within and they don't find it there, they go, okay, well, maybe I just don't have it. So what do I do? Do I look externally for it? Where can mm. I get it? Even if I don't buy it, like, where can I find it? What can mm. I do out here that will build it? And I think that with my book, I'm hoping to help people when they look within, if they find that their self-love or self-worth is low or lacking, or if they're asking, well, have I ever loved myself? Do mm. I even know what it means to love myself? What does that look like? They have the courage and resources available to continue looking within to try and build up from the ground with themselves, by themselves, looking at what they truly need as an individual, as opposed to what industries say they need or what's been mass produced or generalized for lots of different people, which might not work for them in their specific needs. And to have the uh, trust in themselves and like the faith and belief that even if they're not sure if they've ever experienced feeling love for themselves or acting as though they have love for themselves, that is something that they can achieve. Yeah. And you don't, you don't, you know, you don't necessarily snap your fingers and, and have it, no, no, but it's no, something no. you can work towards and make progress uh, towards just like anything else. Kind of like building a muscle over time. Mm -hmm. You know, you might not be able to lift a hundred pounds on day one in the mm -hmm. gym. <laughs> no, definitely but you, not. But you can after, you know, a few months, a few years for some people, it might take a long time, but it's also trying to tell folks that, it's uh, it might not be the instant gratification that you get when you purchase a externalized product, mm. but it is worth that investment of your effort and time. Like you are worth that investment. You are worth doing that work. You know what I mean? Hundred percent. Yeah. I I'm afraid. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. I pressed the wrong button there. Oh, um, I would say a hundred percent because you are with you your entire life. You exactly. can run as fast as you want, but you'll always be with you. And all the disgruntledness that you have about yourself, you will carry with you until you stop, turn around and face it. And exactly. as you start to unpack it, you realize, hell, this isn't even my stuff. This is societal's image of me. This is parental. This is past DNA, this is ancestral, all these illusional, delusional expectations of what I should be. And it's robbing me of who I really am. And when you start to dig in, I gotta look at this program and look at that program and look at, you know, this pattern that you've been repeating forever without even knowing why. And you say, okay, delete, delete, delete. Keep what is going to propel you forward. But what's going to hold you back, just press the delete button. But that requires you to spend time with yourself. And most people are running from themselves. They are. And time is such a precious resource, mm. too. It's not just, oh, well, do I have the money to buy mm. things to help me? It's like, well, you know, if you're working multiple jobs, do you have the time to use yes sit down with yourself in, in quiet and stillness. Is quiet and stillness something you even have in your home life if you've got lots of kids, if you've got a big family, if you're living with roommates, maybe not. Mm -hmm. and, you know, when you have to choose between, am I going to make food for myself today and make sure that I eat? Or am I going to sit and like meditate on trauma or on what I'm running from? Sometimes the loving choice in that moment is to make sure that you're fed. Yes, you know? so yes. You have to have so much patience with yourself. And like you said, it takes time mm. and as you don't always have the time it takes more time <laughs> and that's the thing is that it's prioritize yes right is like what can you let go of mm -hmm. or delegate that yes. allows you to free up the time five minutes a day of self-reflection you know right. meditation going for a walk being with self Yes. And if you do have a bunch of kids running around, five minutes in the bathroom on your own, <laughs> right? You know, it's, right. um, I've got two grandkids that are constantly following me everywhere. So it's, I understand being there with three and I thought, oh God, grandkids, they remind <laughs> me there is no time. But if we have to delegate other things to other people, or we just have to say, you know what, this isn't important right now. I am. Right. And I think too, like uh, coming back to what you were saying earlier with, are these expectations societal, mm. are they parental? I think when people look within and they're trying to figure out what patterns to delete, as you said, uh, so much of that is a mental effort because mm. the idea that you're allowed to disagree with certain people in your life, especially if it's parental, is huge. And so yes. the fact that you're even saying, well, not only am I examining this and I don't like it, 
I don't think it's right. And I don't think it's an accurate description or reflector of who I am and what I'm capable of and what I want to be. And then I think that comes to that weird level of expectations with just taking five minutes a day to sit with Mm -hmm. yourself and reflect with yourself. I feel like when people start their self-love journey, because there's such an emphasis on urgency Mm. and efficiency in like the industries that we have and being like the fastest most productive person you can a lot of people say well what's five minutes anyway because i'm not going to solve all of my trauma Mm. in five minutes and it's like well no but you might look within and have a moment to think about something and have a moment to feel something and that's that gradual progress adds up over time and Mm. i think generally at a collective level if we could just take a lot take of the harm, five. <laughs> yeah, take five. And a lot of the harms that come from uh, industrialization and capitalization, where we're focusing on there's never enough time. Mm. I'm not worth this if it's not going to be an instant fix, or I'm not going to be able to instantly see the results of my effort, um, or I don't have the money for that, or making it focused on those external factors, like you said, or being afraid to go against the status quo, whether that's what your parents have taught you or what your industry teaches you or what your career or profession or college degree teaches you, even what your neighborhood teaches you. Um, All of that takes a lot of mental strength. And I think people reduce it down. They simplify it to like, oh, well, what's wrong with me? Why can't I love myself? That must be so easy. And the reality is it's it's really not. It takes a lot of courage. It takes a lot of effort over a very long time. And I commend everybody who has even put that effort in ever, regardless of when it went or if they're still doing it, because it's a lot harder than people think. It's a lot harder than people give themselves credit for, I think, often, you know? Most of my generation I'm turning 70, so most of my generation, we were never given the permission. Oh, yeah. You're right. It is, who do you think you are? You're so self-absorbed. Yeah. You're so vain. You know, a song about it, right? So, you know, it it was like time to reflect on on your self-discovery of what kind of woo-ha is that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, And uh, it's, you know what is expected of you. Right. And and that is like, but I can't live up to that expectation. It doesn't fit. What do you mean it doesn't fit? You've just got to, and you know, or you should do. And we we're still unpacking that into all of that that made us feel less than, made us feel unseen. Mm-hmm. Your generation is at an era where please discover who you are now. Don't mm-hmm. wait for our age, 50, 60, 70, longer. Don't wait. We need you to step into self and be the beautiful essence you are. Raise your vibration and your frequency. Be the love that you are because then you are sharing that love out with everyone else. You then become part of the solution to healing the world's problems. Yes, of course. And it's so interesting, too, that because for every person who steps into self, like you said, and raises their vibration and shows that to other people, even if they don't do it in an overt way where they're writing books or making music or making content Uh for people, just walking around being who they are. When you see somebody who is sure of themselves and and solid in their Mm self-concept and knows who they are, they carry themselves a certain way. They speak about themselves and others a certain way. And even just interacting with someone like that, it almost feels like it gives you permission to do the same. Like you said, people, you know, they didn't have permission. They had these expectations. And when you broke them, you got immediate. uh, (laughs) And so seeing people who are fully stepping into self unapologetically Mm. and understanding that they're still people. So they're just like you and I, they might still experience fear, but they're choosing to be who they are because like you said it's a choice yes even in the face of that fear even in the face of not having enough time or not knowing the answers or maybe this is not exactly their final form if we even have one right Right. (laughs) we're always evolving that's the whole part of the human journey right but they've given themselves permission to in this moment show up is what they understand their most authentic selves to be right now And seeing that out in the world is such a beautiful experience because then it makes you feel like, okay, well, I can do this and maybe I can do it incrementally. Maybe I'm not fully ready to go after my dream profession and dress exactly the way I want and take care of myself exactly the way that I want and pursue certain types of knowledge. But I am ready today to maybe not be a people pleaser. And if someone asks me if something is okay with me and it's not, maybe I will be ready to say, actually, I don't want to do it that way. I'm going to try and do it this other way. And, you know, it's like, it's one small step for man, but one giant leap for your soul. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and that's the thing. We are here on that soul journey. You know, the, the soul 
is that divine goss universe spirit source energy whatever you wish to call it is here to have this human experience to resonate and connect with the heart then to give it to our spirit in action for our mind to know what it needs to know when it needs to know it to have that clarity when we feel the wisdom we understand the knowledge we've been so obsessed with knowledge 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 but what we're not teaching people is to trust the instinct of what knowledge is relevant at what time. And right. in order to trust that feeling and to be the love, as you said, you, you see people, but you feel them. Mm -hmm. You feel them. And when people trust that feeling and they go, no, no, that's not right right now. Don't know why. Don't need to know why. But no, that's not right. Ah, that road is right. Why is it right? I don't know. I just know I got to walk it. You learn to trust the the encompassment of all that energy is in within you, and you calmly walk forward in your choices in trust. You can't have that if you are living the expectation life, because exactly. you're so busy trying to please. Do you like me now? Mm -hmm. Right? And and that is so empty and soul destroying. It soul is. building is the inner love. It is. And when you're living the expectation <laughs> level too, you're so preoccupied on the reactions that the world has to you that you often don't even look inward to see what your reaction is yeah. to a certain situation because if someone else is upset about it it doesn't matter whether i liked it or not i'm going to change what i did to make sure that they're not upset anymore or if someone else yeah. likes it it doesn't matter what I feel about it. I'm going to continue doing what I was doing previously because they like it. And that's what's reinforcing my action as opposed yes. to having that inner motivation. And it's being able to listen to yourself and trust yourself too is such an important form of wisdom. I love what you said, by the way, about how, you know, uh, having the wisdom to understand the knowledge when mm -hmm. the time is right. It's one of the reasons that I'm so passionate about self-care because knowledge is very cerebral. It yeah. focuses often on the literal. It focuses on... Uh, textbooks and verbal interactions and the written word and literal language and how we yes. communicate and understand it. Um, but wisdom often comes to us in a somatic way or in an inherent way in, you know, that gut instinct, like, yes. hey, something, or, you know, the hairs are standing up on my yeah. arm or my, the back of my neck. And I don't have, I can't explain to you why yeah. I feel the way I feel. Like you said, I don't know why this path is right, mm. but I'm going to take it. And alternatively, I don't know why this path is wrong, but I don't have to justify to anyone, right. including myself, why I feel that way. This is how I feel. And so I'm going to walk in that. Honor and it. It's one of the reasons that I think physical self-care beyond just the superficial things. Like I love face masks. I just did a face mask this morning. But taking care of your skin, taking care of your hair from an external perspective is not really what I'm referring to when I talk about physical yeah. care. I'm talking yeah. about making sure your basic needs are met almost so many Americans are chronically dehydrated and they have no idea. Right. Are you getting enough fluids every day? Are you getting enough nutrients every day from your food? Are you going outside? Are you getting fresh air? Mm. Is the air stale in your home? Are you moving your body? Not, you know, doing in intense exercise regimes. If that's what someone likes, then amen for them. But are you getting movement in for your body at whatever level that you can every day? Yeah. Are you meeting these very basic, but vital and pivotal needs that your body has because if you're not it's very difficult to tap into that trust state that wisdom state because how can you tell if you're having a gut instinct when your stomach hurts all the time because exactly you, you know what i mean yes <laughs> i do i do no let's let's turn the clock back 100 years you know before transportation became the thing mm -hmm. people walked to wherever they were going yeah they walked to go and get the food daily mm -hmm. right they were in amongst nature all right. mm -hmm. They didn't have all the fumes from the cars. Mm -hmm. Yes, we did have the Industrial Revolution that caused its own issues if you lived in the city. But people were active on a daily basis just for daily survival. Mm -hmm. Now, what do we do? <laughs> we get into a car. We park mm -hmm. the car as close as we can. Yep. <laughs> and we do a little walking as we can. We go to the supermarket and buy prepackaged stuff. Mm -hmm. Where is the freshness? It's there. Sorry. And oh, are you all right? <laughs> I'm so sorry about that. Right. And with the freshness as well, something to consider. I'm not sure about other parts of the world, but at the very least in the United States, even if you're going to 
places where you can purchase fresh produce or locally sourced produce. There are issues with the soil at this point in the development of our country. The soil is lacking in vital nutrients. And it's not to a point, you know, people love to hear things like that and take it in an extreme, which I think is another big problem. Life is not polarized often the way that people like to make it seem. There are shades of gray in between, which is something that I talk about in my book. But the soil is not as nutrient dense as it was previously. And so even when you're getting fresh produce, uh, at least in the States, it often does not come with as much nutritional support as we need for our vital systems to work at full functionality in our bodies. And I think one of the things that I find fascinating because I lived this way for so long is that people will hear things like that or they'll hear things emphasizing the importance of self-care, you know, going on walks, getting enough sleep is a huge one as well. Um, and they'll kind of turn their nose up at it and they'll say, okay, well, I don't do any of that. And I'm, you know, and I'll use myself as the example since I'm going to be a little bit critical. I'm the president of the debate team and I'm a full-time student at my college and I have three jobs and I am the uh, editor-in-chief of the paper and I do this, that, and the third and blah, blah, blah. And I don't take care of myself and I'm totally fine. Sure, but you're not <laughs> uh, because after it's not sustainable. It's all, you can only really live that way for so long and different people are built differently. And so some bodies can sustain that level of overexertion for years at a time. Uh, some cannot, and mine did sustain it for years and years, but eventually it will catch up with you. you the price has to be paid. Yeah, you will have chronic fatigue. Mm. You will struggle with chronic insomnia. You will have just a slew of GI issues, <laughs> digestive yes. issues. And it, you, at some point, will have to start working on those things in whatever way that you can. And the issues that lead to people living that way, like, oh, well, I have to work because I have to afford all these bills, or I have to do all of this because I have, like, there's always a reason. Yeah. And the reasons are very valid. But those uh, issues, those access issues do not disappear once you've become incapacitated because you haven't taken care of yourself. Yeah, exactly. So then you have to find a way to care for yourself and nurse yourself back to health, even while all those issues are still bearing down on you. And so if I could go back in time to when I was much younger, like, you know, an early teenager and say, hey, I know you think that the solution to <laughs> having all of these responsibilities and all of these burdens is to just cut yourself short and take time away from yourself. But that is not the long term solution. And in the end, you know, it might take a decade to catch up with you. Mm -hmm. But in the end, you're going to be so unwell that it will be even harder to keep up with these responsibilities than if you had been taking care of yourself well the whole time. And so it's worth taking that time to uh, avoid losing even more time farther down the road. And I think that people often convince themselves like, oh, well, you know, I can get away with this. And just, I don't have the time. I don't have the availability to take time for myself. And basically what I'm trying to say in the, in the short version is that you need to make the time or it will be made for you because you exactly. will not have a choice eventually. Yes. <laughs> you uh, otherwise, it's going to give you a great deal of time in a sick bed. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And, and believe me, I know because I was one of those people, um, you know, just live life to the fullest. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, you know, married, had got children. And then you are like, like my daughter right now with two babies and two works, you know, they're running on five or six hours a night. And I know that they can't keep that up for, for long. You think you're even of having another one, but get some sleep first, you know, because right. yeah, we kind of think, okay, one day it's going to be easier, but then there's different stresses that, that happen all the time. And we, as a society, have got so used to living with stress mm -hmm. that we don't realize as God has wound up so much that we're pop, 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 as we go and we don't realize how wound up we are until the spring breaks now of course folks everybody's digital now and you don't remember the watches that we each have to wind up or mm -hmm. things that you if you wound them up too tight the spring would break mm -hmm. well this is what's going on inside of you at some point something's got to break and mm -hmm. you will get sick now of course with covid nowadays and so many trillions of variants mm -hmm. going on there's a variant of this and a variant of that. And, and it's like we're getting sicker more easily because mm -hmm. our immune systems are not managing to keep up with the next big thing. And I think a lot of that, too, is the emotional stress that we put upon ourselves, environmental stress, and also the fear of the unknown. Wars happening, um, 
more, you know, more variants going on, financial burdens. How am I going to cope with, you know, never mind look after my old age. How am I going to pay rent next week? Exactly. And and uh, it, it's how do I stay healthy when I look at the expense of it all, you know, yeah. and it's it, all of that type of thing kind of dump some people and they go, but I just, I, it's too overwhelming to, to find self-love and look after me. But on the other hand, if you don't, the price is much, much higher. And, you know, back to the five minutes. If you spent five minutes with your eyes closed, just absolutely paying attention to your breathing mm -hmm. in and out for five minutes, that five minutes resets you. If you could do that two or three times in the day, you mm -hmm. will start going, you know, this is so good for me. I'm going to extend it and go to do it more often. And you are fine. As you feel better, you want to do more. It's the same with good foods, dropping sugar. When yeah. I had my third child, I used to have two sugars in my black coffee. After I had her, I thought, no, no sugar. Coffee mm -hmm. tasted awful for the first two, three <laughs> cups because was, sweetness wasn't there. Then I got used to it. Yeah. But I got used to the taste. Now it's just straight black coffee. Um, I've sugar, processed sugar, not in, in anything that I add to it. It's in the fruits and the vegetables, which is more natural. I do like the sweet stuff, but I like it coming from a natural source. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just simple steps. What could it I is. cut off? What could I, what can I make less of? It's like plant-based foods. If you could go to that two or three times a week, it's actually healthier to get more greens inside of you it than is. it is, you know, to have yet another burger. So <laughs> it's a, uh, it's mindfulness back to choose positive living. It's that choice to be mindful of our actions mm -hmm. and how we can change them. The biggest leap is the first step. What's your first step? And I think that so many people get stuck on that exactly because yeah. they're like, what's the first step? Because when they think about it, we have so much knowledge at our fingertips, like we were talking about earlier. Um, yeah. with language and resources, which is a blessing. It can be overwhelming. Yes. It's a blessing. And so I think people know that, or at least again, I'll use myself as the, as the, as the dummy example. When I really started feeling the effects physically of the years and years of neglecting my needs, I was very overwhelmed because I was like, all right, well, my gut is a problem okay, but my sleep is also a problem. Okay, but my skin is also a problem. And when I say my skin is a problem, I did not mean from a beauty perspective. Obviously, mm. uh, my appearance was part of that, but I mean like my skin was painful because it was cracking. Yeah. There were rashes because I was not hydrated and I wasn't right. internally or externally. <laughs> yes. um, and I wasn't paying attention to what I was putting on my face or mm. on my body either. Um, and so... I just looked at all of it and I remember feeling so, and I was so tired. I was literally very tired because I was burnt out. And I remember trying to think about, well, where do I start? And I was even more tired because I was like, I don't know. I don't yeah, know I what know. needs to be addressed first. I don't yes. know how to address it. And it's funny because that exact phenomenon is what I want to try and help people. Mm -hmm. And so that's a big part of what I talk about in part two of my book, where I have the prose sections. Mm -hmm. And um, even what we were speaking about with, breathing five minutes a day and how much it will really help you if you do it, because if you just focus on the breathing, even things like that, I found confusing when I was trying to get better because I would, I would sit and I would close my eyes for the five minutes and I would breathe in and out. But the whole time I was just breathing. I wasn't trying to connect with my body. I, mm -hmm. I didn't know how to focus on the feeling of my lungs inflating and then deflating and to ground myself in that. I took the instructions very literally because no one had ever explained it beyond that to mm -hmm. me, which is like a communicative issue as well. Yes. And so I went, all right, <laughs> for five minutes. And it was just getting crankier and crankier the entire time because I was like, well, this isn't helping at all. all right. And I had taken the time to breathe deeply to focus yeah. on how like holding my breath at the top of it to try and clear my mind for the yeah. five minutes and I didn't know that the way to clear my mind was to focus on the organs within me as and feel the breath go into my body try to track where it's going try to imagine yeah. the oxygen traveling to all of my muscles and then traveling back through my heart all mm -hmm. of these different steps of the just breathe for five minutes yes. and 
what I want to do with my book and what I've aimed to do and like part of what the resources are in here is to take things like that that seem easy yes break them down for people who are exhausted and who feel overwhelmed and you asked earlier you know like what's step one yeah for me I talk about how where I was when I was feeling overwhelmed because I, I had ended up in the hospital in 2020 not even from COVID but from these GI issues it got to a point where I couldn't even drink water without throwing up mm. and I had no idea why and after my stay in the hospital they did scans they did tests they tried everything but there was no physical obstruction mm. there was no diagnosable illness and so really it was you just have to take better care of yourself you have destroyed your gut's microbiome you have way too much acidity the lining of your gut has been hurt and it is just because of how you have been neglecting yourself and not eating well or consistently you know like skipping days of meals and then overeating on other days for years and years and years and so you know what's your step one your step one is to start from the ground up it's like very very basic building blocks what do i need to eat every day i need to eat protein (laughs) i need to eat fiber I need to eat carbohydrates. I need to make sure that I hit these nutrients. Magnesium is a big one. Mm. Um, Like vitamin B12, especially if you're struggling with energy levels. And, you know, and I need to make sure that I'm not just taking a bunch of pill supplements of those things. I need to get them from my food. And so what food am I going to eat? And where am I going to get it? And how long is it going to take to prepare? And, Mm -hmm. And then the next steps kind of become obvious the more you focus on them and it's like all right now I've got all the tools I need and I know kind of what I'm looking for nutrient wise and now here I am making the food let me see how long it takes me so that way I can adjust my daily schedule moving Mm -hmm. forward to to see how I can set even seven minutes aside in the morning to make this egg because it seems silly and simple and like an oversimplification as the solution when you're like oh how is a simple egg in the morning every day going to solve all these issues that i have you'd be surprised if you carve it out and you're consistent with it over time and then if you take that mindset that framework of okay well let me start with the bare bones start with the basic solutions step one (laughs) step one and you incorporate them across a lot of the other problems you're having like well why am i sleeping poorly is it because i consume 200 milligrams of caffeine every single day possibly (laughs) you know it it, maybe it's not because like i said uh, or like you mentioned earlier in the descriptor of my book self-care and self-help and self-love they are not one size fits all no some people can have 200 milligrams of caffeine every single day and sleep like a baby all night I'm not one of them. <laughs> but... And maybe you can have coffee in the morning and you cut off BM, you don't. Exactly. Right. And so is, you get to is... know, you get to know yourself what works. Right. And I think that much earlier you mentioned so many people are running from themselves. They don't want to spend time with themselves. And that what you just said right there is what's hitting the nail on the head. You get to know what works. And the only way that you get to know what works is by trial and error over time. So you have to have the mental and internal fortitude to say, okay, I've been putting effort into myself. I've been putting effort into being healthier. I've been putting effort into change. And I'm noticing that I'm not necessarily seeing the positive results that I'd like to see after a few weeks of effort. So instead of being super frustrated and giving up and going, it's not worth it, I'm not gonna continue with this. Let me evaluate what I've been doing try to figure out why it might not be working at phone a friend. If I can't find the yeah. answer, go you know, talk to different people. Uh, Listen we, to a podcast to uh, people yeah. who, who, have, <laughs> who have worked it out. Worked right? It out right. Be willing to do, try do, it out. Yeah. Try it out. Of course, like do some research, see what I need to adjust and then steal myself to try again. Yes. And to keep doing that for months, for years, if you have to, because as you said, you are the only person you're with for life. Yeah, it's just you and yourself guaranteed for life. Yeah, and so you are worth that investment of effort and time. And even though it can be very frustrating, and that is so so valid, it's no one wants to put a bunch of work into a project to then at the end of that project be told it's not good. Exactly, (laughs) exactly. You know, and you know, we we look at so many millennials now that uh, not millennial PPP centennials that you know reach a hundred or, you know, 104, there was somebody right. at 117, and you look at their lifestyle. Mm-hmm. And for many of them, obviously, they were brought up on healthy food before pesticides and chemicals and everything else. Right. Even though they went through wars and many of them strife, they chose mm-hmm. to what I call look at the sunny side of the street. Mm-hmm. They chose to find happiness and joy. I lived with, who's now 91, I lived with her from... Um, 
85 to 90. And she had polio when she was young. Her oh, twin wow. sister died. Her fiance was killed four days before the wedding. She's been through her own strife, right? Mm -hmm. She still drives. She still cooks. She's still stubborn. She can outrun me. Um, and, you know, still thinks that she could toss people over her shoulder because she's a black belt, you know, Ooh. and feisty <laughs> as hell. And I think it's that for her, it's shoot happens in life. Yes. Right. But what are we going to do about it? Because although it's sad and can be painful, I can be traumatic. Mm -hmm. That's the experience or that is the reaction you've got from what happened. What's the experience that you can take with you to do something good from it? And yeah. I think, you know, things don't just happen to us, they happen for us. What's the for us? Right. And when we look at the for us, and some of the people I've interviewed in the last 12 years have had the most horrific things happen to them. No human being should ever go through that. Yet they chose mm -hmm. to find their courage, find their strength, be willing to go through the process yes. of healing themselves, taking back their lives, finding their meaningful purpose, and stepping in to be of service to other people. Mm -hmm. That exactly. is what we are here for. And I think very often the reason why we do neglect ourselves so much is because we don't know what is our purpose. And if yes. we're so busy people-pleasing, societal mm -hmm. pleasing, depleting ourselves along the way how are we ever going to find out what our meaningful purpose is exactly if we're right? so listening to what everyone tells us we're supposed to be doing exactly. how will we ever know what it is that we feel we are supposed to do exactly it's very difficult and i think too looking on the sunny side of things that kind of like the breath work activities mm -hmm. That was another communicative issue that I struggled with for so long because I took it very literally. And so there were lots of things going on in my life, particularly for the first like 20 years of my life. There were some stretches where it was just like thing after thing after thing. Yeah. And I would look up at the sky and be like, can I catch a break, please? Can yeah, I, exactly. you know, and can uh, I breathe? You know, can, like, let me get up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> at least. You don't kick someone when they're down. I know. Yeah. It's like, yeah. you swing again. I, um, <laughs> and I would, I would feel very frustrated when people would tell me to look on the bright side of things, not because I didn't want to. Yeah. Because I felt so deeply like it was a personal failing of mine that I was trying and I couldn't. I was trying and I was still so angry and I was so sad and I couldn't make sense of what was going on and why it was going on. And, you know, when you enter spirituality and religion into that as well, I very much could not make sense of why, like God or the powers that be, were letting these things go yeah. on. <laughs> and And so when people would tell me to look on the bright side, I didn't. I didn't understand what it meant. And I was very frustrated with myself for not being able to do so or not being able to do what I thought I was supposed to do. But what I've learned now is that you can look for the positive in something or for the gift or the lesson in something or the blessing in something without necessarily being happy about it. Exactly. Like you are allowed to go through strife, yes. grief, misfortune, and, and feel the grief, the anger, the sadness, mm -hmm. the fright that comes with that and still choose to transmute it at a certain point or feel it and work through it and then try to see, okay, well, what have I learned on the other side of this? Mm -hmm. Or how has this changed me? And is it a change I want to keep? Or is the true blessing in this that this changed me in a way I'm not particularly aligned with? And so I'd like to do something different. Let yeah. me change now intentionally after this thing changed me kind of unintentionally. Yes. And and so when people say, like, look on the bright side or look for the sunny side or look for the silver lining in things, I think it's just so funny to me because it's very similar to the take five minutes for yourself. I think so many of the issues that we have with trying to love ourselves and trying to care for ourselves is that we all want to. We're just not quite sure how in a lot of the information that's out there. Yes, it's it misinformation. Doesn't with, it doesn't come with that wisdom that you were talking no. about. It's yeah. just the knowledge. I think people take it and they try, they really do make a good faith effort to apply it, but it doesn't make sense because it's not broken down for them what it looks like in practice, what it looks like for them. Because also like if I take five minutes to breathe, when I'm focusing on my body, like I said, I imagine what the oxygen looks like coming in and then going back out and like going through me. There are some people who are not very visual imagine, like they don't have very visual imaginations. And so for them, 
it would be a lot more impactful to focus on the literal feeling of like their midsection expanding and then yeah. retracting. But if you don't, like when someone says, you know, take five minutes to breathe, they don't give those specifications of it's going to yes. be different for everyone. And here's some examples. And so uh, I've literally done breathing shows, which is all about yeah. the how to breathe. But there's, <laughs> there's one thing I need to point out. When you've got somebody who says, okay, yeah, but how? Mm -hmm. That is an enormous step. It is. It because is what, they're, what, you, what they've just done is given their permission Self's permission to learn exactly. something new. We can't help people. You know, I look at the analogy of the street again. One side of the street is really dark and tumultuous. That's where all the pain, the anger, the trauma and everything is. And there's the road in the middle that you're invited to walk on. And the other side of the street is sunny with people who have walked on that road and now live on the sunny side. Mm -hmm. The sunny side people cannot help people until they're on the road. Exactly. Right? They have to get on the road. We have a free will. And when we go, enough is enough. And that cosmic two by four has given us a wackaroo. <laughs> and we go, it's enough. How mm -hmm. do how do I change things? That means they've stepped onto the road. Mm -hmm. That's when they need the right wisdom from the sunny side. Not a hand up, but a, a hand out, but a hand up. And mm -hmm. saying, let me show you how I did it. Mm-hmm. Because all we can do is share how what worked for us. Exactly. But people have to decide for themselves. Exactly. What, what works, for, what them. works for them. And that means that you've got to be willing to try many things until you find it fits. It's like, oh, God, don't don't talk to me about online shopping. Um, but, <laughs> you know, let's just take a, a women's issue of going in to buy a bra. How many bras do you have to try on before you find oh, that God. one that fits? Do you oh. give up at the first bra? No. You want to strangle somebody because each <laughs> bra, you know, they're this way, they're that way, but they're every way but the way you want them. And right. you have to go through the trial and tribulation. That's the same with um, the people on the sunny side saying, I have something that maybe can help you. Give it a try. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't work for you, and you, you, when I say give it a try, it's not like, oh, I look at it now. It's literally try it on see how comfortable or what not. And anything foreign is going to feel uncomfortable at first. Yes. Give it a moment or two, right? It's like when you're trying a new dish. Ew, mm, mm, ooh, this isn't so bad. Give it uh -huh. time. So right. um, some part of whatever that person's sharing works part way. But now you need something else that they're unable to give you. So keep being exploratory. Keeping Keep curious. being wondrous, yeah. being inquisitive. We are going to be exploring our possibilities to the day we die. Mm -hmm. And if you lose your wonderment and that exploration, what's next? What's possible? That's what gets you up in the day. And right. that exploration of who you are, why you are, what you're here to do is going to unfold every single day of your life with mm -hmm. pivotal moments along the way. But don't be afraid to try things on for size. To try things on. And then also don't be afraid to say no. If you've tried mm. something that comes recommended from a good friend and you try it out and it's really not for you, mm -hmm. you can say, thank you so much. This didn't really work for me, but it helped get me closer to what will work for me. Exactly. And I'm so grateful for that. And it's so important to develop that skill you were talking about with the inquisitiveness and wondering who am I and how can I be out in the world and what am I here to do, including how am I here to live my life and help myself? Because even if you somehow figure out like the perfect regime for taking care of yourself and making money and living life and doing everything, you know, every box is checked. That regime is going to have to change one day as you get older yes. because your physical needs mm -hmm. are going to change. Trust and what me. fascinates you <laughs> <laughs> and what and what fascinates you is going to change. You know, something might be uh, your your passion, your heart, what you pour yourself into right now. Give it twenty years, it will still be an important part of your life and something that meant something significant to you right now. But you might have kind of mastered that trade in 20 years and you might want to find something, something new. Else. You know, yeah. and you, so you have to be open to changes. You have to be open to once you get on the sides, of, like on the street, right, with the sunny side yeah. and the dark side and you're there and you're in the middle and you're trying to figure out where to go and you're saying, how, how do I do this 
how do I live? What do I live for? Why do I live that yeah. way? You have to be comfortable trying things on. Yes. Being able to distinguish, yes, this works for me. No, this does not work for me. And trusting yourself, but also giving yourself like the grace and patience and compassion to be fallible, to make mistakes. Yeah. Because sometimes you'll say, yes, this works for me. No, this doesn't work for me. And you'll find out in a few months, like, ah, okay. You know, I thought at first that this was working, maybe not so much anymore. So let's, let me try that other thing again that didn't used to work and yeah. see what I think about it. You have exactly. to, you, know, you have to exactly. stay open. You, you just open. weren't ready for it at that moment, but you're ready for it later. And right. that's the thing is that as you are willing to try things and you're taking that step forward, you're more in tuned with yourself and you kind of, your body speaks to you. It's not just the, you know, the, the programming of the mind, you know, your soul, your heart, your spirit, your body is speaking to you. And yeah. it's go, okay, what do you need? You know, trust your senses. I did a fabulous show on chakra eating. Oh, and oh. it's like if you're know. if you're craving certain color foods, yes. Right? It means that particular part of your chakra needs feeding. Interesting. I've never heard of that before. I've I've heard of the chakras, but I've never heard yes. of chakras. I'll have and to because if, if, you know, oh God, you know, I need some pumpkin or, you know, <laughs> I need some greens. And it's like, it's that part of the chakra, the body. It, and when that's the reason why breathing is so important, because you actually have to align yourself up, sit right. up straight, which I'm not inclined to do, and allow your chakras to line up. And that's when the energy can go through your body because we're fluid creatures. Our oxygen, our blood, and our energy must run through our body. If it's not running through our body, that's when we have dis-ease and, and consequently get disease. So it's right. the same with our chakras when they're in alignment. They're there to fortify and to yeah. strengthen our body. So if we crave certain foods, God, why am I craving being aubergine all of a sudden? You know, it's there's a reason behind it. Don't deny Mm -hmm. don't deny your body because it might just be for a short spell or right. it might be something I really enjoy. I've got certain vegetables that are in my diet all the time. Mm -hmm. That's courgettes, that's spinach, that's carrot, that's onion, that's mushrooms. They're my five go-to and whatever else I feel like adding to it. You can take my meat, don't touch my veggies. So, exactly. Right? And it's, it's so interesting too, from a physical perspective as well, in terms of trusting yourself. I think, uh, like we were talking about, you open yourself up to trial and error and you're allowed to be wrong and to try new things over again. And you have to trust yourself. The more that you allow yourself to change your mind, the yes. more you learn to trust yourself as you go, because trusting yourself is not the same thing as always expecting yourself to make the perfect choice. Exactly. It's trusting how you respond to a choice and trusting yeah. that you know how to listen to that wisdom and pivot and make those changes and that you are capable of adjusting even if things don't go quite the way you expected. And with the chakra eating, um, I will have to look into that because it's so fascinating. But I, um, in a similar vein, I found out uh, a few short months ago that some of the foods that are in my staple diet, which I eat just a ridiculous amount of mm -hmm. salmon, I, I have it almost every day. Well, let's say um, mega three right there, right? But right, and I found out that there are certain foods that, for a few of the different conditions that I have, are really, really very beneficial for helping regulate them or helping mm -hmm. clear your mind and like mm -hmm. use uh the use the full facet of your cognitive function. Mm -hmm when you struggle with the things that I struggle with. And one of the first foods that it listed was like, there's a ton of research about salmon being amazing for people like this. And I had never seen it before, uh -huh. but two years ago, my body was like, hey, we need to be eating more. I started craving salmon all the time, whether it was like sushi or oven roasted yeah. salmon or whatever. And I didn't know why, like you said, like we said much yeah. earlier, I don't know why this is the path for me, but yeah. it is. And so, yes. so I listened and I started eating salmon every day. And it wasn't until two years later that I finally got the, oh, haha, there's the answer. Yes. But by that point, I had already trusted myself and let myself lead. And so I think so much, so often we know so much more than we think we do. We, we deny ourselves because we, 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 unfortunately, our wisdom sometimes gets caught up in the chatter. Yes. You know, because there's yeah. constant chatter going on, blah, 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 blah useless <laughs> stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And the wisdom is trying to come in. It and, is. That, and that's the thing is, if we don't think we feel, mm -hmm. oh, I feel like salmon, mm -hmm. right? And we trust that. That is the wisdom telling you that's what you need. But yes. if if your head gets into it, but well, you had salmon last night, try something else. Have a nice, just juicy steak, right? Mm -hmm. And they can talk you out of it. Trust your feeling. 
but I'm going to put a pivot here. Make sure that that wisdom and that feeling you're feeling isn't based on being emotional. Now, emotions are all here to indicate, you know, I'm happy, I'm sad, I'm mad, something's happening, what am I reacting to? Deal with it, right? Mm -hmm. In the moment. Don't become emotional about the emotions. And don't yeah. bring emotional into mm -hmm. your decision making, right? Like okay. never choose anything at the time of emotional stress ever. Mm -hmm. But it's if you're feeling extremely stressed, emotional, depressive or anything else, that is not a time to make a decision. That's the time to go to your home you know, your home things that are solid in in your diet, in your everyday, the things that you know you're comfortable with, they've mm -hmm. got you, they've got their arms around you. Mm -hmm. you. That's not the time to try anything new. That's the time to go to where you feel safe exactly. until that emotional thing starts. But we've got to be careful that that emotional doesn't come into the equation because that can stifle the wisdom. It can. And I think you spoke about not getting emotional about the emotions. Mm -hmm. That is so key because earlier when we were talking about how I was trying to see the sunny side of life, mm -hmm. but I didn't, I didn't feel like I could do it right. And so then I was frustrated that I wasn't doing it right. At that point, I was really just feeling frustrated yeah. for feeling sad. Yes. And so then what's so harmful or, or maybe not harmful. Well, okay. I think it's harmful for me, but yes. <laughs> uh, what's so dangerous about that is it is a very, a uh, slippery slope to creating shame within yeah. yourself because basically instead of just feeling sad and sitting with it like you said emotions are information mm -hmm. they're giving you feedback about hey there's something going on either internally or externally that is making you feel depleted like either some need is going unmet or some boundary is being violated it could be your own self with your yeah. own internal boundaries it could be the external world who knows but they're just there to indicate to you uh, like the results and reactions happening all around you all the yeah. time. And so when then you get frustrated with yourself mm -hmm. or angry with yourself for feeling what you feel, yeah, it's not going to stop the emotions from continuing yeah. to give you the information because you haven't actually addressed what it is that's going on exactly. that's causing that informational feedback. And so then you get stuck in this loop where you're mad at yourself for being mad and you don't know why you're mad. <laughs> and then you take the madness out on everything else as well. Right. Yeah. Right. And then you can never actually figure out, well, what's going on that's causing me to be upset. And I think that comes back to what you were talking about with the generational expectations, mm. because some of us aren't allowed to be mad. Yeah. You know, it was like a taboo, like, oh, you have so much to be grateful for you. Why yes. are you angry? You have no yes. right to be angry. And also, sometimes we're angry because there's something in our lives that is not good for us. And we know that saying no to it would potentially cause conflict or go against the grain of what's expected of us. And so we feel at a subconscious level as though we're not allowed to say no to that thing. So we just continue to be angry and we're angry at ourselves for being angry instead of saying no because of those expectations. Yes. And so it, once you really, you know, it's all connected. All it's all connected. Yeah. <laughs> and for me, it was, you know, depression. You know, depression, I have clinical depression and it comes on and sometimes it's empathetic, empathic depression, so, you know, societal depression. I'm just as an empath, I pick things up and sometimes it's just hard to put it down. <clears throat> and I used to have the rabbit hole really open up and swallow me. And, you know, last thing you need to hear is snap out of it. Or, exactly. You know, just think sunshine because there is no rationale over right. depression and there's you know you can talk as rational and logical in you know, as much as you like it is a devouring feeling that you know your illids are being eaten up torn out of you um i don't get that anymore because i know the signs i know when that rabbit is beginning to dig a hole and i know what to do okay. if i ever do get there do you have medication i can go to but that's the only time I go to it. Otherwise, what will bring me back to center? Because most of the time, if I'm getting into depression, I'm allowing outside influences. I need to make my world smaller. Mm -hmm. I need to go in and do something that is self-love. Mm -hmm. And what is it for me? Music. It's wow. not the lyrics. It's music. I'm scientifically proven that there's certain music with the frequencies that will realign your frequencies in your body and bring you back to an equilibrium. So as I'm listening to that music, you can kind of feel 
things changing inside of you, calming you down and uplifting. Maybe sometimes I need to listen to a day of music if it's that bad. Sometimes a few songs or happy videos of people rescuing animals. That one really does for me as well. right? But again, that goes back to knowing yourself. Don't beat yourself up because you have a condition. Exactly. I used to feel guilty by having this. Right. And I've got a few other issues as well. You know, I'm an asthmatic, so a few other things. And if we concentrate on the things that that our bodies have, our struggles have, then we begin to feel broken. Mm -hmm. And when we feel broken, we feel less than. Mm -hmm. Well, I go to the beautiful word flawsome, the Japanese thing of a bowl being broken, putting it back together with gold. Mm -hmm. I'm saying put yourself back together with love. Mm -hmm. let every piece that you put back together with a beautiful membrane of Mm self-love then fill that cup with love and you will see how it will regenerate all the time and keep flowing over because that flawsomeness is what makes us so exceptional it's our life experiences it's the things and our trials and tribulations it's our exuberance our survival our thrival of everything that we are And we're still here to tell the tale. Mm -hmm. We're still here to share the love. And it's like, don't criticize or beat yourself up for the way you feel. Mm -hmm. Don't relish in it. Don't feed it. Feed what it needs. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it might be a self-hug. You Mm -hmm. know, just give yourself a hug. Get a pet and let it love you. Right? (laughs) So that's the exploration of life. What right. is going to give you the fuel to feed yourself? Yes, of course. And especially it's so important with things like depression, like ADHD, um, like anxiety or OCD as well. There's a, such a strong genetic component with that. Yeah. And so truly you cannot beat yourself up for having a condition because for some people it does develop as they get older and it is situational, of course. But for some people that is quite literally just the brain they are born with. Like they are yeah. more predisposed to it. Same thing with things like diabetes. Like you, yes. you, you can't beat yourself no. up for being who you are in the way that you are. What you have to do is figure out how to live your life in the best, most stable way that you can as who you are yeah navigating it right Uh, i actually recently found out i do have add i know you had i knew i had dyslexia and my kids have add and my daughter said but mom you've got add and i go no i don't think i was diagnosed with that and then i took a test way up there and i thought oh that explains a great deal it really does it's so fascinating that you say that because i think one of the most interesting things that i've uh borne witness to is are my generation and people younger than me who go through the testing and they yeah. get a formal diagnosis for something like ADHD. Uh, and especially if they have siblings, which yes. I do, and their sibling also has ADHD. Yeah, yeah. I've got three and of them. Then, <laughs> mm-hmm. And then the the parent will be like, well, I don't have it. And I'm like, uh, I would like to enter. Into yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> I know. And it's like, uh, you know, I, I know I only discovered I had dyslexia at 21. We, this wasn't even in the conversation in my generation right right we didn't talk about what was add what was dyslexia what was any of that and if you did have it it was a flaw yes it right it, it was not a you know oh that you're defective mm-hmm. right and we were so focused i have a grandchild with down syndrome back mm-hmm. in the day he probably would have been institutionalized or definitely spurned and now today he's this ray of sunshine and we're seeing more people with down syndrome get out there and be those leaders of awareness and gifts. And I think I look upon him as a beautiful gift to us of how to see life differently. Yes. And like, you know, we have Down syndrome. They live very much in the moment. Absolutely. I'm upset this moment. I'm smiling the next. Mm -hmm. No drama, no nothing. I'm just, you know, I choose to be happy. When I'm not happy, I'll let you know. And then I'm going to go back to being happy. Isn't that a wonderful lesson to learn where our unhappiness is very often caused by us dwelling on something that really we should have just let go of? Yeah, absolutely. And with the difference generationally, oh my gosh, generationally (laughs) in diagnoses too, 
for women in particular, um, even we've made great strides with diagnosing ADHD, things like Down syndrome, dyslexia, and early intervention, and like making sure that we're trying to work against the stigmas around those things and let people be authentically who they are yes. in the world. Even with all of that, the diagnosis rates for women in particular are still so much lower because there's this emphasis on uh, like correct behavior for women as a gendered issue where it's like, oh, well, she's being too loud or she's being defiant when they're a child. And it's viewed as a personality and behavioral defect as opposed to, hey, that's very much a symptom of ADHD. And so in the instances where they look for these behaviors in little boys, they often write them off in little girls or the symptoms manifest very differently behaviorally in little girls. And because the majority of the research has been done on men or males, we don't really know what it looks like <laughs> with the symptoms. So it's a yeah. lot harder to catch until someone's much, much older. There are lots of cases of late diagnosed, particularly yeah. ADHD women because yeah. of that exact phenomenon. Yeah, I know. I mean, we've got, ooh, 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 okay. <laughs> you know? <laughs> uh, um, but you know, the other thing is, again, people treat it as defective and pharma gets in there. Oh, drug. Mm -hmm. Now, why do I need a drug for this? This is just something, this is my idiosyncrasy. This is the way I, what it actually did is became an explanation for the things that I struggle to do. Ah, okay. Right? So I know I'm a visionary. Mm -hmm. I see things, I'm a seer. Uh, I can see things to fruition. I can see paths. I can see so many possibilities. I can see the finish line. I can see people benefiting from it. I am not the builder. Ah, okay. So I wouldn't be able to tell you where you put the nail in, how you build it, the structure of it. I'm the visionary of what to build, but I need the I need the blueprinter. So right. for the builder to build on. So what the emphasis is, is that each and every one of us, another analogy I use, we're all in self-discovery of our instrument. Mm -hmm. And we learn to play our instrument well. And we can play solo very well. But when we choose to join an orchestra, each in our own strength, each with our own individual instrument, and we choose to play harmoniously together, look how we transcend. We are not meant to be every instrument no we're not and we're not meant to be such isolated individual creatures either we're meant to be parts of communities we're meant to help each other and contribute yeah. to each other and uh coming back to what you were saying earlier about you know if you need to ask someone for help or delegate to somebody else to take five minutes for yourself you're only really able to do that when you are part of a community and that's yes. one of the reasons it's so important to have that social support and to be there for other people when they need it as well because it goes both ways and to just try and you know uplift everybody whether it's by being your authentic self by sharing your light with the world by offering advice or just by lending a helping hand whenever you can you know there, there's the very spiritual side of things i think but then there's also the very literal side with in the 3d world like right now in this yeah. moment how can I help somebody in, yeah. a, very, in a very straightforward sense? <laughs> and, and you can come, because I'm a very spiritual person, you can come from that spirituality, but the, your spirituality doesn't have to be woo-woo talk. It can right. be very down-to-earth talk, but with a spiritual essence, yes. right? And the thing about, you know, going back to social media, uh, which, you know, you're, you're very much emphasis in, is it's an algorithm, we're an algorithm. So what we put out is what we're going to receive. So if you don't want negativity, don't put it out. If you do want support, support others. Your community, if you've chosen it online through social media, is a community. How can you be there and be interactive with each other? Support right. each other. Share. Right. And even for people who aren't creators on social media, because it's like, okay, well, I don't want to put anything out don't engage in things you don't want to see. If you're exactly. frustrated and you feel like all that you get fed all the time with your algorithm is negativity, stop watching the negative in the negative videos. Yes. You're not interested if you see something come up that you don't want to see any more of. Seek out positive communities yeah. and engage with them. And you have that autonomy and that participation. You don't have to sit and just let things be fed to you. You can control much exactly. more of what you interact with than you think sometimes. I'll share a little story. A few years ago, my mum was dying and she was really at death's door, but just unable to cross over. Mm -hmm. And I said to everybody, I need a prayer from everybody 
whether you know whether it's god prayer energy prayer doesn't matter but to help her cross over peacefully because she was in a lot of pain i had at that point this is 2015 130 of my friends online not just put likes but prayers for your mother energy for your mother love for your mother all of that the next day my, my they had put a bedroom in the living room and the lovely big bay window and it was a rainy day my brother had gone off to have a respite my sister was there and she went to go make a cup of tea mm -hmm. and she said when she came back the sunshine was r right on my mum's face and my mum's eyes were open and her hands were open and she'd passed over peacefully. And this was all within 24 hours of that prayer vigil. We have to understand mm -hmm. we are energy. When yeah. we share that energy, it can be for harm or for good. When we share it for good, we are supporting. We are enabling. We are sharing love. And we are benefiting. Now, if we could do more of that for each other, it would actually help us on our own self-discovery of our own self-love. Mm -hmm. I agree. It's, that's such a beautiful story about your mother. Thank you so much for sharing that. I am so glad she was able to pass over peacefully. Yeah, and that sometimes people just need a little help in life and in exiting. Right. right? And, you know, and, and that is, let's be there. They don't need the wailing or the tears. They just need... Thank you. It's yeah. time for you to go, right? And that's what uh, what life is about. We're all going to exit at some point. We want to exit uh, painlessly and and gracefully as we can. And the support in our exit is just as important as the support as our entrance. Yes, absolutely. And the in between. <laughs> and everything that we do. In everything in between. Every road that we choose, every vegetable that we add to our time. Absolutely, exactly. Um, how do you help people other than through your social media? But how do you, obviously the book is very much a how to, and I want to know where people can get the book, but how do you help people on their particular journey? What's your technique? So I think it does come down to energy and just having the courage to be who I am. I have never really understood <laughs> the social rules that uh often like dictate society about what's like weird versus normal so not necessarily what's appropriate or mm -hmm. rude or polite but what's weird to do and what's not and so just be weird right so <laughs> just for, be like, weird. <laughs> for example i have no qualms um speaking with strangers and mm -hmm. and but, not necessarily in like a one-off kind of way, but I would say every single day I talk to at least between like five to 10 strangers, even if it's just a very passing thing to say, you know, hey, I really love the way that your shirt matches your shoes. Or like yeah. I'll, I, I look around and this is not necessarily just for other people because it's also very helpful mm. for me. But I think by helping myself, I allow myself to be who I need to be to help others. Exactly. But I look, I look around and I try to find moments of like intentional mm. magic or even if it's not intentional, but um, like synchronicities and, and cool things. Like I love when I'll see uh, sunlight filtering through leaves and it will illuminate, like I'll follow it with my eyes and I'll look mm. down and I'll see a flower or I'll yes. see like a dragonfly or things like that. And so, developing that ability in myself to not just write those things off as coincidence or as mundane or as monotony, but to say, no, those things are very magical to me. I think the world that we live in is so beautiful, even in small things like, oh, it's been raining all day. Okay. But the way that the rain looks going down the street is very, yes. very lovely to me. And so I look all around me all the time um, for things like that. And in doing so, I, <laughs> I, I like I end up applying that framework to people. And so all around me all the time, I look for synchronicities and moments of connection or moments of beauty. And when I see one <laughs> with a stranger, I share it with them. And I say, mm -hmm. you know, like, hey, I love this about what you did. Or, hey, you look so much like this person that I used to know. They were such a lovely and hilarious person. Like, I hope you have a good day and things like that. And so whenever I'm experiencing 
feelings of like magic and enchantment and joy in my daily life, I do everything I can to obviously, you know, allow it to exist within me, but while it's existing within me to pour it out, you know, I yes. think you have, to, you have to fill your own cup, but once my cup is full, I try very hard to keep filling it. So it runs over in a sense. Yeah. And so I can share that with everybody. And then that with social media and with my book is often how I create for the world. Like whether it's with writing or with music or with videos, I try to think about, you know, with my poems, what could I point out in terms of how people think about their arms, for example, or their freckles? Like what could I, when I look at those features and when I think about those things, how am I seeing them through the unique framework with which I view the world, looking for small, insignificant, some people might say moments of magic and beauty and different perspectives. And so then I create poems or I create videos or I create books, music, songs, whatever, and I put it out into the world and I hope that whoever it needs uh, finds it. <laughs> and, and I try to use obviously like marketing tactics with like hashtags and, and things like that to get it closer to the people who might need it. Yes. <laughs> um, and in terms of interacting with community too, so many of the poems that I've written of that nature have been from commenters. Like if you go and look at the fairy godmother videos on my various platforms, they're almost all in reply to a comment saying, hey, can you do this thing that you do about hair or about yeah. teeth or about stomachs? And I say, okay. And so then I take my framework and I think about that feature and I go on walks and I go to my work and I read my books and do, you know, I, I exist the way that I am authentically in the world thinking about this thing until it comes to me and I'm like, oh, I've got it. Yeah. <laughs> and then I and then I write it down and then I share it with the world. And so I, I try to help people just by, I suppose, giving them, acknowledging them, I would say, yeah. acknowledging them and yeah. saying, you know, I, I see this choice that you've made, or even mm -hmm. if this wasn't a choice, I see this way that you've shown up and it's really lovely and I want you to feel seen. And so I'm saying like, mm. hey, you look so great today, and it, but, it, but I, hey, I see you. Um, or if Which is so necessary. Because yeah. so many people just feel that are totally invisible, yes. uh, you know, and they're not seen. They don't feel heard. They don't. Oh, oh who would care? Yes, right? exactly. Who, who cares? And when somebody just acknowledges somebody, they love your shoes. They love your top. What well, well, a smile! Isn't it a great day? All mm -hmm. of that type of thing. You see them. They're mm -hmm. there, and maybe it's just the passing by. Maybe it's a chat for a second, mm -hmm. but it's like I was seen today. Exactly. And that's in a world that's saturated by people and noise and insignificant things, mm -hmm. that gift of seeing each other mm -hmm. is so profound. I it see is. you. And I think because the world is so saturated with noise, I think people can often internalize the idea that them being somewhere, whether it's the grocery store or a coffee shop or the library or whatever, is insignificant and so i want to say not only like hey i see you but i see you and you being here alive yeah at this time is significant and even if you don't know me it was significant enough for me to, to take, take note. the initiative and to not only take note of it but to share it with you yes and so you being here inspired this action mm -hmm. and so here you go and uh, well, anyway. here's a quick little story of how I started out in podcasting. Mm -hmm. uh, I met this woman at Starbucks and I loved her outfit. Mm -hmm. And we ended up being friends for a while. And when I first started, when I was asked to do podcasting on another network, I didn't even know what a podcast was. I'm talking 2012, right? Um, and it was costing so much a month and I didn't have the money. And she said, no, here, this is your path. Here, I'll pay for the first month. And that became my path now that, that just 12 years and over 11 years of my own network, right? So it's, we never know where that hello or that acknowledgement of eventually I moved and she moved on. It was just this, what we call a seasonal friendship, but it was pivotal in my redirection and we never know, right? And you know, what I did for her is as a reader, she had autistic kids, I could actually translate what was going on in their heads that she couldn't because she was, too emotionally involved so yeah. we are a gift to each other if only we would allow the transaction of acknowledging each other yes exactly and that 
that is what I try uh, to do to, to help people and to also help myself because I think when people feel insignificant, they often look externally for their significance yes. and they're like, you know, I need to achieve this or I need to look a certain way or I need this to happen. And it's like, well, no, if you feel insignificant, you can make yourself feel significant and seen by giving the gift of acknowledgement to other people. Mm. And so, for example, if I were to compliment somebody, or actually this is a great example, about two months ago at my job, I have a part-time job right now as a barista at a local like brewery that I really enjoy. And there was a woman who was ordering and she had a really cool purse. And energetically, she just seemed... I don't know what it was. It was she didn't seem like hostile or sad or anything, but she just seemed kind of down in some way. Yeah. Blah. And so, yeah. And so I commented to her, like, hey, I really love your outfit. Like this, I love how this matches that and and whatever. And she brightened up a little bit, but tried to brush it off. And she's like, Oh, thanks. You know, I didn't even think anything of it. I just picked it out. It wasn't on purpose. And I was like, Oh, well, so you put all that together and it matches so well and you didn't even do it. That you're just iconic, you know, that yeah. way. And she smiled and she was like, well, thank you so much. And then she, you know, went and sat down and we took more orders and whatever, but I was going to get some of the dishes from the bus station afterwards. And she slid, she like went <laughs> at me and slid me this little card. And she had, she wrote a handwritten card for me that said like, dear uh, barista, like Marissa, like, thank you so much for your kind words I was having a really bad day and they really uplifted me and so now I will go out and try to share your energy with the world I'm like choking up thinking about it because... yes paying it forward yes yeah it was just so beautiful and, and that so, was... it's so simple it's so you simple. acknowledged her right and and she felt unseen at that time yeah. and look what it did for her and now she would have gone out and shared that that ripple effect with other people how many people would be receiving good vibrations because of your one acknowledgement. Right. And in that moment, I felt significant. Yes. I felt seen because it was like what I do matters. And so when we're feeling low and isolated and unseen, I think the best thing we can do is help other people. Yes. Because then it makes us feel like we are making a difference for them. And so we are significant in that way. Do you know We've what I mean? got to understand Every single one of us is a contributor mm -hmm. to this planet, to each other. We're all here in service of one another. Yeah. So when we step forth with our love and sharing and kindness and consideration and compassion, that is our contribution. Mm -hmm. So whenever you do that, even though it feeds you, it's meant to feed you because that's the energy exchange. Exactly. In and being kind and loving towards someone else, it is that nectar inside of yourself glowing and being fed. And if every single person just went out and did one kind act a day, mm -hmm. right? Just imagine the ripple effect. Yes. Um, and I think it's so... I think that that framework, that mental framework kind of applies to every area of life, not just interacting with others, but anything you do if you look for magic and synchronicity and like fun little details everywhere you can find them you just yeah. have to. and some people will argue that point and say oh well that's you making them okay well so if i looked for magic and i found it and that means that i made it that's still magical to me it's still <laughs> who cares if you made it or not good for you for making it right yeah. <laughs> you are the wand yeah right so now the people to get your book is the Fairy Godmother's Growth Guide on Amazon and other platforms. Marissa, M-A-R-I-S-A, -S McGrady, M, lowercase C, G-R-A-D-Y. You can go and get the book and just help, let it help you on a daily basis just to navigate or pivot or just support your direction in life because that's sometimes all we need. Now, to go onto your Instagram, it's rris.writes, W-R-I-T-E-S, uh, on LinkedIn under your name, uh, Marissa McGrady, and TikTok, R-I-S Writes. So any other place, I know you're building a site, um, yes. but any other place that um, people can find you. Um, if they want the audiobook, there is a variant of that. Like there's a recording of the book on Audible, so they can find it there. 
Um, they can find the book on Amazon. They can find it on the Simon and Schuster website as well. And then TikTok, Instagram, and my YouTube is Riss Rights as well. Um, and those are pretty much all the places right now. <laughs> Excellent. And I, as I said, when you're building a site, we will add it to the show page. So thank you for taking the journey so young. We, you know, for my generation, A, the permission, B, we had to wait for uh, literally the energy to change in the world you know, for the for the consciousness to rise, for that permission for us to, to be. Uh, you are immersed in that now, where the universe is supporting that growth of self-love because that is the answer to all that ails this world, is if we all step into self-love and share that self-love with others, we wouldn't have wars and hate and greed and opulence and all of that. So we are the solution to the world as well as to ourselves. Thank you for taking this journey. It's very, very important. And we have no idea who we help along the way. However, folks, if you've read a book, if you've listened to the podcast, and it has had an impact on you in any way, or you decided to share something forward, please do share. Because the more you share that, you know, the more it inspires other people to do it as well. So thank you so much, Ramirezan, for being here today. Oh, looks like she's frozen here. So we're going to say goodbye. And please listen, uh, share the podcast, have a podcast party, take notes. What can you do? How do you feel? It's all about looking in to live out and find your own beautiful essence. So until next time, folks, bye for now. We hope that you enjoyed the show. There are so many more for you here on selfdiscoverywisdom.com. Just go to the podcast tag at the top there and you will see all the many genres and all 3,000 shows ready for your listening. We are here to serve you, to help you on your journey of life. And we know that through inspiration, it begets invitation. We are supported by you, the listeners, and those that we interview. Anything that you can spare us in donation would be greatly accepted. And we do hope that you enjoy the next show.